Hello everybody in the world. Mark the Guitar Guy here and I've got my little cup of coffee going on because here in New Zealand it is six in the morning, which is not a good idea. Usually if I'm here at six in the morning, it's because I've just gotten home from a gig and driving all night or something crazy like that. So uh, we're getting used to this new time to see what this goes like for you guys. Because if you are in one of the parts of the world that I've never heard of, please say hi, please comment and uh, maybe give us a like. Let us know this is a good time for you, a great time to be doing guitar lessons and um, or at least asking some questions. So uh, today we're going to be focusing. Oh, yes, look at that. Melden, you're back again, Ro. Good to see you. Yes, early today. So, um, yes, yeah, so we thought we'd do something a bit earlier today just to see how we go with the stream. Just, we're just trying to find the best time, I guess, to do all this. And um, that way we get the best questions from you guys and, and hopefully that works. But anyway, we're going to be looking at percussive strumming today. So it's not necessarily percussive playing, which is a different style of te technique that I'm not actually that brilliant at anyway. But we're more looking at the, the right hand, this little guy here, and left hand and how they make an overall percussive strum. So let me just play for a little bit and you can uh, start smashing some uh, questions as we go. So I'm going to just play a groove, a couple of different types of grooves. I'm going to start with a kind of a reggae groove that I really like playing and it's probably the most percussive thing I do. And uh, I'll, let's just do that for a bit and see what happens. Let's make something up and um, let's, do a, let's do a G minor key. Just to, to be a bit different, eh? Love this groove. There's a real percussive groove. So I'm trying to get the bass note, the back up strums sort of thing that would be normally, normally be that part, right? You know. But I'm trying to cover the bass note, and I'm trying to get the maybe getting an extra little strumming going on in there at the same time. Trying to make the chord full. Trying to separate the bass from the guitar. Trying to put in the, a few little this sort of stuff going on here on the guitar itself, a couple of little thuds for the, as I'm doing the bass note, and I'm trying to get that backbeat going. So there's a lot going on within that strum, right? So, And it's not just one hand or the other, it's actually a combination of what I'm doing with both to give me that. And so what I'll do today is I'll start off by showing you a little bit of stuff that I do on the left hand to get that backbeat, because the backbeat is actually the hardest one to get initially, and it's probably the most common part to use and no matter what strum we're doing. So that is what we're going to be looking at today. Obviously you can ask me a question on most things, but that's where we're going to start. And so let me just first start by showing a little bit of stuff to do with the left hand. And then because because there's a lot of things going on here, right? This is not something you just get in a go. It's something that I've developed from playing live and having to do so many different kind of grooves in a night because the more grooves you got, the more interesting you sound. You don't just sound like you're just playing the same song, the same person. You know what it's like. You go and watch someone play and you love their first song. You're like, wow, that was so good. And then the, and then it's sec second song happens. It's like pretty similar to that first song. And then the third song happens and you're actually bored of them because, well, maybe that's just me, but you're a little bit bored of them because they kind of sound like the same exactly the same like even even a totally different song they managed to make them all sound like the same song um so i like to make very different grooves and that's how i get a lot of uniqueness out of my cover when i do my cover gigs and even originals so the backbeat and this, this let's do another groove first i'm gonna do another groove let's just do a basic rock strum right the basic rock strum is based on that that groove there 
which is thousands of songs, right? It's the Eagles. It's like. It's that kind of stuff, right? You might recognize that song. It's that kind of groove. It's um, if you do a faster version. Now, if we put a backbeat in there, you get the backbeat is on the two and the four. So one, two. So that's the one, two, three, four. One, two. Now I'm doing that all with my left hand this time. So I'm actually most mostly the left hand. I'm using my this sound to make the backbeat. And the backbeat happens when I'm doing that. I'm actually hitting the bottom few strings because I'm trying to make it sound like a snare drum and a kit and a drum kit. That snare drum sounds really like uh, sharp. It's a high frequency noise. It's not, um, it's not a doof, it's not a low bass drum sound. It's a cutting whack. It's a whack, it's a slap, it's a, it's a nice, it's what you get, you get what I'm trying to say. And the way we do that on the guitar, there's different places you can do that. You can hit the guitar, you can, you can get sort of this sort of stuff going on. But I'm playing, I've got a pick plectrum. And so I'm playing with good technique. And by the way, if you wanna know how to do that, go to my videos on how to hold a pick and you will know how to hold a pick. And trust me, people do it wrong and have been doing it wrong for many years. And when you know just a few little adjustments, you'll sound amazing. So backbeat, the way I'm doing that is I'm, I'm trying to get the bottom three strings because they're the little thin ones. Because if I hit the top string, it's gonna be a little bit too over, overwhelming. And plus if I do it wrong, it's gonna sound really wrong if I'm playing a chord here and I hit the, I don't quite stop these strings and I'll get these big bassy notes coming through. So the idea is I'm trying to bounce my strumming from top to bottom, top. So I'm like the bass start, I'll, I'll, the very, very first strum, I might hit the bass note. Next strum is gonna be the middle strings. Upstroke's gonna be the bottom strings, maybe, right? But for this, we've got that back beat on that second beat. So down, down, up, up, down, which is the strum the second down becomes the backbeat. So I'm basically going, so I'm trying to get good at going from the G, G is easy to do this with too, because we can we can kind of get good at this technique of flattening those fingers to make those strings do that, this thing. So that's literally how I'd start, I'd go G. And what I'm doing is strumming the top and then bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top. Just like that, pretty simple. Now I've got an upstroke. Now the next upstroke is needs to be a kind of sounding. You wanna have that bong chicka sound going on. That upstroke that I'm doing right there is the next thing you wanna to add to that. So that's how I'd practice this. I wouldn't just try and do the whole strum and go, oh, I know how to do this drum. And now I'm gonna do the backbeat. It's not as easy as that. You've gotta you've got to intentionally bring these things into your playing. This is with everything with guitar, so that you are bringing in a new concept into the subconscious, feeling what that feels like, and then applying it slowly to your playing. And then it becomes part of your playing. So if we do this G chord, bass note, pretty much bass note and a few others, we're going to back beat, which is a snare beat, up stroke. Now we've got two upstrokes to do, so we're going to go. Okay, that sounds a bit weird like that, but the next downbeat is going to be another stop where we'd normally be a down, down, up, up, down, that beat, that last beat there. We're going to make that a stop as well. So we're going to go down. Okay, I'm showing you the whole thing here, so I don't expect to have this today straight away. Something you can work on because you're going to find. This is, I teach this all the time. The left hand is not going to do all this stuff all the time. It's going to be off on the wrong time, or it's just not going to even going to do the right sound. And we're going to have kind of strings ringing. It's normal. It's okay. You just want a little bit of backbeat sound, just a little bit. You don't need a lot of backbeat sound going on. So initially, you just want a little bit coming through. It might sound like this. Like can you, I'm just giving me a little bit, but you can still hear the backbeat, which is important to give you that groove. So I'll, give, I'll do it again, we'll just go through and tidy the whole thing up. So we've got a bass, we're flattening our fingers, not pushing down, just relaxing, getting that this noise here on the bottom strings mostly, just the, the bottom few strings. Up, up, 
same thing again once again we're hitting that same spot bottom few strings two or three strings and you're getting that back beat again and then an upstroke at the end is going to help us otherwise it's going to sound a bit dead it's going to sound like that sounds a bit too abrupt at the end we need an upstroke at the end to help that out so we're just throwing it back on before we go now that whole strumming pattern was one bar and I'm only playing the bass notes, the top few strings, one time. Okay, right at the beginning of the bar. Now you only notice it, but if you don't really notice it when I'm playing the groove in its entirety, you don't actually need to be playing all the strings all the time. That might be something new to you already. So. So that's with a G chord. So that gives you that backbeat. I'm helping it out by hitting these bottom few strings and I usually give it quite a lot because in a gig, you really need that backbeat to get the dancey groove going on. And I'll, add, I'll start adding in a bit of punch from my right hand as well so that I might even mute the strings as I'm landing so that what I'm getting is I'm landing my palm and then hitting those bottom few strings for that, for that, for that as well so that way i've got like two different ways of kind of creating that backbeat which will give me that that chick sound i call it that sounds that i'm actually landing my palm at the same time now so without landing my palm you won't hear that much difference but it's more like insurance policy in case i don't quite get something going on here or i've got a chord like a c where there's a bunch of open strings that i might not be able to get like a really good so let's say I don't do anything here and I just try and do it through my right hand. Can, can you hear that I can actually do it that way as well? So um, so that's just the left hand side we've covered. And then the right hand side, let's do it sort of for the same groove. Here's my G chord again. So let's stick with G for now so we can get that little off and on thing because that's a really handy technique, this little thing going on here. Right hand now. I'm just going to leave this as the same chord. Now I'm going to do, do the same thing, bass. I'm going to land, I call it a stop, I'm going to land my palm strong, and what I'm doing, instead of landing it where I mute it, to really make this work to, as a uh, backbeat, I just bring it up a little bit, and if I bring my mute up a fraction, it kills the strings, right? If I bring it back a bit, you'll hear those notes, which is kind of a cool sound, that's palm muting, and then if I slide up slightly, it kills it. So. I want to kill it for that back beats, right? So I'm going to go bass note. Now what I'm doing is also muting the downstroke. I don't have to, but I could just be like. So that's how I'd start. If I was you guys, I'd be starting up the guitar a little bit more. So picking a little bit higher than you would normally. And it really helps to play with a pick for this because you can really dig in and pull those strings out and really get that back beat. If you're playing with your fingers, you can still do it. Can you hear how it's just completely volume is just dropped so i've really got to work hard and my fingers are getting slammed trying to do that but i'm able to use the pick for this i'm able to use that little green guy that i've got at the moment to do that so that's the right hand so let's just do the right hand only now i'm not doing any muting here i'm making it particularly making it look weird just so you know that i'm actually holding it out I'll slow it down. So that's another option. And so what happens when you combine the two, you just have that flawless. I'm adding some awesomeizing there as well, but we'll get into more how to do that another time. So there's some basics for doing a backbeat. I'll do one more groove. So we've done, let's do the funky groove. So the funky one's real cool to do because it really needs that backbeat, which is that, and, and I like doing the funky groove a lot with um, bar chords, but let's do an E. So that means I don't have any excuses, right? E's got a lot of open strings. So. see everyone uh, joining us today that's actually really cool we've got lots of people here today we've got 
19, 20, 21 people watching, which is really awesome. Obviously, New Zealand here, it's like six in the morning, it's quarter past six in the morning. We were trying at like 10 in the morning for where we are, and the rest of the world's asleep. So, or having dinner or something at that point. So, it's really cool to see you guys there. Make sure you put your questions in. My wife, she's watching those questions, she's keeping a tally on them, and she's going to start bringing in those questions as we go. So, uh, it's going to be cool. So, let's do Funky Strum now. Funky Strum, where does the backbeat go? Boom, da. Boom, boom, da. You can kind of hear where that tick-tocking of the doom, da, doom, doom, da. The backbeat is that da that I'm talking about, which I'm pointing this direction for some reason for. So that's going to be the boom, da, the boom, da, boom, da. So that's there's two backbeats in a four-four groove generally. You can add more in, but you can basically hear the basic groove. We don't want to get too tricky with our grooves, by the way, because otherwise it's going to be with too much of a drummer and not a guitarist. But so I'm doing an E chord. That second beat, I'm going bass down, up, stop. I'm doing a more advanced funky strum, I must admit, for this as well. It's not your standard funky strum, which is down, down, down up, up, down, down, like a down, miss, down, miss, down, up, up, down, down. I could do that. But with this funky, slappy style that we're doing with the backbeat percussiveness, we're actually lacking. If I stop the guitar, we're lacking a bit of sound. So I'll give you an example. Get a bit of dead space because the stop kills all the strings from ringing. So I'm going doing a look for what I call ghost notes. I call ghost notes. They're called ghost notes. I didn't name it that, um, but that's actually from a drummers do it all the time. So if any drummers are out there, um, I, I play drums as well. So what some of the stuff to do is those little ghost notes. Um, if you've got a, if your left hand's playing the snare, you're doing these little ghost notes like boom, 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 cat, boom, cat. There's all these little bounces, boom, boom, cat, 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 cat. cat. Cut, cut, cut. That, that little, those little e shots in the left hand, and that's sort of like, uh, let's see if I can do it on a, um, or I'll try and do it with my right hand. Those little, those little things, that's what's sort of going on. I'm trying, trying to do that within this drum. So I'm getting this. So when you get it fast, you can get quite a cool groove. Let's try and get real fast. So it's the same groove, and it's not, and that might sound impressive to a lot of people out there, and that sounds cool. But uh, if you think that's impressive, give us a like. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much the same groove. It's harder to do slow, believe me. So you can see that groove. I have no idea what that was. I just made that up on the spot. It sounds quite cool with that, especially that last bit. Um, what you want to be doing when you're playing slower, though, you're going to have a real obvious mistake or space or whatever, because obviously the slower it is, you can actually hear quite clearly the little differences between all the grooves. So anyway, here we go. I think it's time for your questions, but hopefully that's made some sense. If you like what I've just described or you want to know more about it, um, I have got a lot of spaces open in my diary at the moment because it's a brand new year, and I'd love to... Um, see you guys maybe for one-on-one -on -one, just a one-off you might have a question for me um but yeah so so go for it navdeep singh good to see you bro is it necessary to play the same strumming pattern which is played in the original song that's a really good question actually man i get some good questions from you guys you guys are clever martin the guitar guy subscribers absolutely are the smartest by the way subscribe um that is a good question. Is it necessary to play the same strumming pattern? It's not, ne it's not completely necessary. It's probably a good starting point. So you might want to start with roughly the groove. And so what you'll find is it usually sits in one of the strumming patterns. So if you look at my videos um, on strumming, one of those strumming patterns, there's, there's, there's probably seven, eight, nine proper main strums. 
And out of those strums, you find the one that works the most, maybe to do the original groove. And then what's kind of fun is you can change the groove of a song. So um, let's do it, for example. Let's do, an, let's do, a, let's do a song, um, make it easy one that's no, not going to get me copyright <laughs> and problems. Uh, happy birthday to you. Hopefully no one owns that. Let's do happy birthday to you. So happy birthday to you is in three, four, like one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, I know I'm nailing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Uh, 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 now deep. Happy birthday to you. So that's obviously how, well, that's how I hear the original song. And then there's also, if you do the funky strum, you can do a different version, but you've got to place the words in a different way. But you could be like, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Nabdi. Happy birthday to you. So it makes you sing it differently, makes it feel different. If I did a slow groove, happy birthday to you. That sort of thing, or the happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Group reggae feel. So, yeah, you don't have to. You might be the sort of person that likes to mix things up and go like, I'm just going to do a totally different version of this song. Uh, and that's always enjoyable for the listener. But if I will give you one word of advice when you do that. Please make it better than the original in some way or don't throw out the best part of the song um, and replace it with some awful melody that doesn't make any sense because I've heard that. <laughs> anyway, carry on. So uh, any other questions out there? Got That was another great question to start off with. Percussive strumming with bass lines. So yeah, we're getting into real advanced stuff with the bass lines, right? So my advice for bass lines is keep it simple once again. Don't try the most crazy, ridiculous, you know, groove, like even in that song, right? <laughs> So the bass line, for the people out there that don't understand what I'm talking about, I'm trying to, I'm going to put in these riffs or licks that are, instead of doing a lick like a guitar lead a lick, I would just do a bass lick. Nice and simple, right? Make it on the bass string. So usually top string, maybe the string underneath as well, but not usually too much more than that. So that's a good rule. And then maybe only two notes would be a, a bass riff. Like, I'd make it really simple. I wouldn't be thinking, let's just make sure I play two notes, but I'd just keep it really simple. So if we keep that same thing on the key of E. So I've got, in the key of E, I've got these really accessible bass notes right here, right? There's more of a scale there, right? There's a bit of basic scale. If I'm using the open string, I've got a 0, 2, 4, right? And I've got a 0, 2, 4 underneath that. And if I, no, that's enough for riff. I don't have to do any more, uh, grab any more notes than that. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to do some riffs, right? I'll slow it down a little bit. That was just, right? That was, and it's the back end is where I do my riffs usually for the bass line. So. A little bit more there. whatever like I'm for some reason I'm in a slidey mood today um, there was that riff there was, there was that riff there which was the same concept two four on the string below ending on that next string down which is the hammer on and so I'm putting at the back end so I'm going one two three da 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 one two three ba -da -da, one and that's the easiest place to put your your licks and your bass line is for this groove, I'm just doing a bass line like. I'm just kind of getting that kind of thing happening inside it. So. So what I'm doing there, that's, now that comes from playing Johnny Cash a lot. So. Uh, uh, There's another great example, right? There's an E chord, just some B7s, and, and there's an, I think there's an A in there, and I might throw a G note in there. So I've got an E chord. I'm just doing an E chord. I'm going bass. This is doing a, like a 2-4 groove. So I'm doing bass, top string, 
and as a down up, but I, I stay away from all the other notes and I jump to the bottom string. So I'm going, let me put this guitar, uh, let me put this down a little bit so it may be a little bit easier so you can actually see the guitar playing and I can get a coffee while that's going on. Give us a like if this is, uh, if this is helpful, guys. Um, this is advanced stuff too. So like I say, get in touch with me and we can work our way through some of this stuff so you can have this as part of your playing. So just get, we get this ugly cable just realizes flapping away there. That doesn't, that's a bit distracting. So we're going to be doing the E chord and the A chord and I'm doing a Johnny Cash groove. I'm doing a bass, bass down up thing. One and a two or just a one. In fact, let's just do that even simple. We're going to go bass, stop the chord on the way down for the chord and then next bass note. So the bass note is going to go E, B, E, B. It's just the, I'm just holding this chord down. I'm playing the open string E and then I'm playing this note here on the next string for the next one. I'm going bass, st strum with a stop and then a bass st strum with a stop. Now this is a little bit different than before where I played a bit further up. To kill it, I've only got two beats. I don't want to kill it because it's going to go... I'm not going to get any chord. I'm just going to get... I'm going to get more of a boom, boom whack thing going on, right? So, but I'm, this is just the right hand here I'm talking about. We're going to do a little bit more of a that noise. So it's like a percussive stop, like a snare, sorry, and a mute at the same time. So we're getting this. Uh. Now I'll just do, and I'll just stop this guy from doing anything so I can just focus on the right hand. And you can see that we can do that just with one hand. And not only that, I'm actually muting the, the bass note too. Now I can add a down up, which makes it a bit more. Pretty cool. And then get that sort of groove going. So I'll just be doing that and then A, just pick two notes that you like. So in this case, it's the A note and then the opposite of what I just did, right? Starting on the A. Usually start with the bass note of the actual chord because that's a good way to go. And then a B7 chord. Um, now this is the different one. So my left hand, my B7, I'm going to jump that finger from the B up into the F sharp note. Now, this is just because I know the song and I've done it lots of times and I like those. It gives you that classic. Notice I did a down up in there. I just, I just, did, just to throw out a bit of something else in there. Here we go. And this is the way to start. Slow. Maybe slower than that. You might be. the sound right it's all about that tone and when I speed up now that's like I said it's impressive when you do that sort of stuff but it's not that difficult once you've programmed this once this is programmed you can't do that straight away today if you've never done this once you've got that programming down you'll be able to speed it up from that okay sweet so that's bass notes maybe some bass licks going on in there. Like I said, keep it simple, chuck it in the back end of the groove. Melden, good to see you, bro. You're just like in my loyal every week, got you there, it's so cool to see you. How do you hit individual notes in between strumming and palm muting strings? Good question. So the best way to explain that, let me bring the camera back up. The best way to explain that, Melden, is you've just got to spend some time. I know that's not the great answer for a lot of you people out there, but really is all you've got to do. Now, if we're spending time playing, you're going to calibrate. It's what I call calibrating, right? It's like when a computer has sensors all over a, um, a machine. It's sending information back to the main brain of the computer, and the computer's making, uh, it's getting better and better at, at using all that information and finding out exactly what's going on and where things are moving. And that's pretty much how the subconscious works, how our brain works and miraculously. And so... By just playing a lot and aiming at getting that string that you're after, you're going to find it just turns out. So that's one tip. Another one that's really cool that for that is just don't look. You shouldn't be looking, guys, at your right hand. Guys and gals, we shouldn't be looking here at this hand. This hand over here, we're not looking at this area. Um, maybe just to set yourself up and see if it looks comfortable, and that's it. Then we, we can look here all we want. We can, we can check out. See what's going on. 
And then we want to learn some songs where we get to pick different notes out at the same at a different time. So let's say I'm playing a G. And I want to do this riff. Okay, that riff there, which is this, what is it, the fourth string, hammer on from zero to two, hammer on from zero to two, and then I'm playing the string underneath, which is the G string, which is the third string. And so I'm just going, doing my strum. And I would just play for two minutes, just doing G and trying to get that riff. You might end up doing this, so we get a wrong string like this. Let's see if I can do it. Oops, wrong string. That kind of thing is going to happen. That's really normal. But what it's happening, each time you're doing it, your brain's calibrating all this stuff. Your subconscious is going like, no, that wasn't right, that wasn't right, that wasn't right. Because you know it wasn't right, and it feels not right. But when you get it, you get this like, whoo, this little, I nailed it. And then your subconscious, like a training a dog, right? You're training a dog going, good boy, bad boy. No, don't do this, do that. And then eventually, as long as you're repeating and being consistent with that, eventually it's going to figure out, okay, doesn't like it when I do this, does like it when I do that. So that's what's going on. And that gets better and better as you play. So there's no amazing trick to that other than just doing it. But it's a good idea if you're having a problem with a particular song and a particular note you're getting to, just spend a little bit of time on what's going on, like like I'm talking 30 seconds on like figuring out what's happening. Like let's say I'm playing D and I'm trying to go, trying to do that riff where I slide that finger from that chord on the D, two frets, right? And I'm struggling to hit that string. Then I would just do that. I would play a D, I'd try and play that little, that little slide. Uh, another aspect, there's lots of things that could be wrong here. This is why it's good to get guitar lessons. So if you want to book, go to my Facebook page and hit the book now button and we can actually talk about this sort of stuff. Because you might have a different problem with this and there's a bunch of things that can stop you. But the other thing is if you're not anchoring your pinky on the guitar. So if you're not doing, if you haven't got some sort of stability here, you've got no way of sub, your subconscious knowing where that string is. So you need to know where that is. Hopefully that helps. Any other questions out there? Uh, Oh, I think I've had to say this name before, so let's go. Abhishek Samuel. I'm hoping that's right, Abhishek. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your uh, name correctly. Yep, that's what I do while strumming ghost notes and awesomeizing. Oh, yes. And I've learned all this because of you, Mark. Thank you. Oh, awesome, Abhishek. Thank you so much, bro. That is awesome. So that's this is the thing, right? Get these, go watch these videos. I'm an actual guitar teacher. I actually help people with these things. I've figured out ways of teaching things that I even don't understand. Um, and over time, you start to get an idea of how you can help people, which is what I love to do, as opposed to just a clickbaity video that maybe looks pretty and you feel, get some oxytocin from watching it. But I'm actually here to improve your guitar playing. That's what I'm more interested in doing. So uh, what have we got? Uh, DR, cool. I like that way you've done that. That's cool. I've noticed the notes get a bit sharp when I palm mute the strings. Any tips to avoid that? So you might be you might be palm muting a little bit strong. So if you're pushing down too hard, you're right. You're going to get a little bit more. Uh, let's see if I can do it. I'm going to try and play my E power chord right there. I'm just going to mute. Can this, if I push down, hear how I went to a different note. Almost almost went to an F. So make sure your palm is right at the back. If you're too far forward, you'll get that change of note too much, as well as probably too much muting. But if I go right back to the beginning of the guitar, you only need a little bit of palm pushing down to get a good mute, unless you're doing like, you know, real dark metal, in which case you might hear that anyway. And it should sound quite cool. So, uh, oh, cool. I see some great questions coming in here, guys. So, uh, Bernica Butt. I think I've got that right. Is it a B? A, is it a U? Why well, I don't need my glasses. It's too early in the morning for me. Can you please tell me how to make bar chords easier to play? So um, I do a lot of stuff on this uh, with uh, bar chords, and there's a few nasty bar chords, right? And I've just done a, a little, uh, I sent a thing out on YouTube the other day. I sent it out. My wife sorted that out because she's amazing. But asking if it's the F chord, the B minor chord, or the B flat chord, which one's the one you have the most problems? And overwhelmingly, um, it was the B flat chord, which is this bar chord. 
right? So that's a nasty bar chord, or and some people play it like that. That's the bar chord I'm talking about. You can play B flat other ways, but that's the one they're talking about. I play it like this, it's random, but I taught myself to do that. Um, bar chords. So let's take the F bar chord shape, which is basically the E shape bar chord, right? Let's take that one. And it's gonna, all these rules are gonna apply to most of this. And that is to keep your thumb really low on the neck, okay? So on the neck here, if I'm doing an F chord, might, see how low that thumb is? Now, the reason you wanna go low with the thumb, it opens the hand out. I can now stretch my fingers really far and I can get a good stretch going on. That's mostly the reason. If I bring my thumb up, holding my hand, if I bring my thumb up, my hand naturally closes up and I don't get any width from my hand. So I need to open up my hand. But the problem is when we do that, we have this hand here and we don't have much strength because we don't grab stuff, you know, don't grab my capo here. I'm just gonna give that to you. I don't ever do that. We usually grab things like this. So that's part of the reason as well that we don't have strong muscles that way. So we don't like doing that when we first do it. Thumb low is the trick though, thumb low. And then what we're gonna do with our bar chord, most people go one, two, three, four. They put a fingers on one at a time, starting with the first finger, index finger, second finger, third finger, and if we do that, we tend to have our hand too low. What we do is we go, here's my bar, here's my second finger, here's my third and fourth, and now I'm barely making it. See that? I'm barely making it into the next fret, and I need these guys here to be uh, 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 there, and this guy, uh, 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 that's the noise it makes, right up against that fret. That's the best spot. So you want to be, let me get a pen, so you want to be getting, I'll take that off so I don't draw it. You want to get as high as you can. To, let's say this is the fret I'm trying to get right here. That fret, I need to get as high as I can up on that fret without going under the next fret. I need to be right up here. Obviously, you can't do that all the time. So I'll give you an example. Here's my F chord. That third finger, that guy there, that one there is always going to be a little bit low. You can't quite get it up because this one here is taking up the space and it's pushing this one back. That's usually the bad one to get. That's the one that always has issues, right? So if we start with our second finger, okay, here's my F chord, second finger, find out where that note has to go, that, get it really high, and then your third and fourth and find their position, then you lower your thumb and you place your bar on. Now the bar, a lot of people do go right, way too far over with their finger or they don't go far enough over, they're like this. I like to go a little bit beyond the string, so my first finger pops over the top, doesn't matter how big your fingers are, you can still do this. And that also gives my hand, my fingers here, a good angle. So because if I go too far down, see they flatten out, these guys flatten out, see how long they are now? Whereas if I come up, it gives them a nice pressure towards the guitar. And you slightly need to hook this finger. So the first finger is slightly hooked. You don't want to keep it completely flat. Like a lot of people do that and they wonder why they can't get good bar chords, like straight finger. You want to kind of, Grab a little bit. You want to kind of just uh, uh, just have a little bit of pressure at top and bottom. So that should help with your bar chords. And now the speed of that is a matter of just going, uh, get it on, throw it on, and get the F chord. Start with your second finger, third finger, fourth finger, low thumb, bang. So you literally go through the steps when you first start. And then eventually you'll notice you'll just land like that. And then try doing a completely new chord and going to that F chord. So you might go D, which is thumb up back into our normal position or a G chord where our normal thumb up is going on. And then we lower it and try and get all the way to an F chord and then come all the way back and play another chord and come all the way back and play an F chord. So you'll you'll find that will help you a lot. What else you got for us out there, guys? Paul McCallion, good name. It's good, sounds like a McKenzie kind of name from, a, from the Celtic uh, region there. So can I go from one pentatonic scale to two others in one song. I've only been playing for 60 years. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been playing long, mate. You probably, another 60 years, you can have a go at the second pentatonic scale shape. So, uh, Paul, can I go from one pentatonic scale to, to a, yeah, you can do what you want. You can totally do whatever you want. So I would recommend though, that you make sure you got one pentatonic scale, like comfortable, to the point where you're probably a bit bored. And when you're a little bit bored, that's when I'd go into another scale shape. Um, Guitarists, we're all egomaniacs to some extent, and we want to look like we know what we're doing. So we tend to try and learn as many scales as we can and try and integrate them. But it's just more for aesthetics. That's more just to look good, right? Because it's not actually that helpful to 
musically it's you want to make it sound like music and be in that position that is handy for you to actually do soloing um and if you're doing riffs you don't really want too many because you're going to be jumping all over the show but if you can handle it man and it sounds good yeah do it totally do it i would just say recommend that you you make sure that you sound good um, and then in each scale, you've got some riffs, like go-to riffs that you really enjoy, and you can build on those and get to know the, the guitar a bit better. Hopefully that helps, Paul. I'm hoping that was what you were meaning. Max Hit. Good names out there. How to palm arpeggios with high strings also muted. For example, in the riff of every breath you take, that's a, that's a, good, that's a real big um, song, right? With it. I'm doing it in G at the moment. So. What you'll find with this, this song, and, and it might depend on your picking pattern for this, is that that's not completely the same muting. I, if you listen, you'll hear it's muted. They're all muted, those first three. Uh, what is it, that one? That note there is often not muted. If you listen to the song, you'll notice that comes out a little bit more. That's not actually a muted note, that note, is it? So what you'll find, the top part of the mute, this is hopefully will help you here, is actually muting, because that naturally is how it goes. And then you'll notice the bottom strings are really hard to mute at the same time. You're going to have a, like a sweet spot for the mute that you might have to glide over the strings to find the perfect spot for, for this song. This is an example of that. So I like pulling out that um, those open notes, especially on acoustic guitar. If you're doing it in a like a you're trying to be more legit you can still do it i'm just doing the one chord here but what i'm doing is making sure i do the right picking pattern so when i say the right picking pattern you can do it all down strokes but i like going down down up down up up down up. i've trained that picking technique so that it's spot on and it gives me all those nuances that aren't just down strokes to me, that sounds all downstrokes is robotic. And it's just because I play this one live. So if I did it uh, with the upstrokes in there, it gives it a bit more flavor. And I naturally pull that mute off. It's very hard to see, but I subtly lift my palm by pushing down on my fingers here. I'm just pushing down on my anchor and just lifting the mute slightly and pushing back down again. Don't know if that exactly um, helps you out with that, but it, if it's not what you need, um, feel free to get in touch, mate. We've got uh, spaces there for guitar lessons if you'd like to do like a half hour or an hour. Abhishek, good to see you, bro. Back again. Mark the Guitar Guy, subs, awesome eyes. Make any song your song with your strumming style. Oh, dude, thank you. Thank you, man, for promoting the channel, letting people know that this stuff works. Amrit Singh, always a treat watching you playing uh, guitar. Oh, cheers, man. I started learning guitar just seeing you playing guitar. I'm your fan. Oh, it's so good. So cool. So cool. LV Productions. That was a very nice, happy birthday, Mark. Oh, thank you so much. Very nice. What is? What are we now? January. Oh, Max Hit. How to palm mute arpeggios with high string. Also, oh, we did that one. Sorry, it's my wife. She's just doing a smashing job going through these. Brandon H, would a classical guitar be better for someone interested in playing a lot of fingerstyle stuff? How much different is it from an acoustic? So, good question. This one I get a lot also. So, um, go for what you like the sound of. So, if you like the sound of a nylon string guitar, which is a more, doesn't ring as much, it's not as high, many fr high frequencies in it, but it's got a, a really lovely, uh, different kind of tone. You can play both. It's not going to change anything too much. But classical guitarists in general, and, and flamenco also, they sit, they sit different, they sit with a, a, usually a stool. It puts the guitar in a different place on their body, usually quite high on a, on a high angle. It means we play different finger style. So our finger style ends up being this high finger style for classical because we want, we want straight fingers for, for, for that kind of style. The style that I do, we do a close hand style, which is more of a contemporary style to get that, to get that kind of thing going. Real bad playing there, but you get the idea. And um, so nylon string, I would just go for whatever you like the sound of. Like if you like the album, um, Sting did that beautiful uh, whole lot of songs 
like um, Shape of My Heart and um, Fragile and um, what's the other one? Many years have passed upon a few to fly, oh, Fields of Gold and oh, some beautiful songs that are all pretty much nylon string guitar and that has a totally different sound. So like if you've got that... Remember the one that did that, that Shape of My Heart, beautiful song, um, something like that. And it had a nylon sound, didn't have this clean sort of um, more, more metallic sound. Purely it's the sound that makes you inspired. So I would say go for ones that you really like. If, you, if you're listening to a lot of people that are playing nylon guitars and you can tell they're nylon strings, get a nylon string guitar, totally. And, um, and it's nice for finger style. Now I can't pronounce that name. Fricasse, I'm going to try. Fricasse, um, is it fricasse? Or is it, I don't know, with that little E with a thing, we don't do a lot of stuff with that, and so I probably don't know what that means. Um, Scon? I hope that's right. I just like pronouncing these names, guys. How to know that I have to change the strings? Oh, good question. So um, if your strings are sounding dull, you'll know. You'll know because the strings will sound, um, you know, you strum a chord, yeah. and it just seems to be, it, you've just lost your inspiration for the sound of the guitar. Um, then I would actually change the strings at that point. You can, if they get real bad, you can start seeing that the, the strings are starting to fray. You'll get certain, uh, you know, little little missing parts on on the wind, on the strings themselves. Um, if you break a string, that'll often be the thing too. So the way to check though is to look at the end of your guitar. You can see how clean this part of the guitar should be, and then you'll get like dirtier here. That's usually another sign that you've got um, some old strings. And with new strings, you just get so much inspiration from them. So I like changing the whole set at the same time. That way you don't just have one bright string on the guitar when you have a broken string, right? You break one string, one's on there, it's real bright, sounds beautiful, and the other ones are all dull. So I would just do that then. Um, and I recommend, um, I'm hopefully doing some stuff with Elixir soon, but Elixir strings is one of the ones I love. I absolutely love these strings and they last. They sound great for a long time in there. So they sound amazing. And then the decline on the strings is very slow as far as they get dull uh, very, very slowly. And I'm able to do lots of gigs, lots of worship playing at the church, lots of guitar lessons, and they still sound good. These strings here that I've got on um, are Elixirs. And there's a combination of elixirs here, but they, um, this is probably six months I've had the strings on this guitar and I've done gigs. Um, so yeah, that's what I recommend. Amazing and very, ha Daniel, amazing and very helpful stream. Oh, thank you so much, Daniel. So uh, this is good to, good to know. It's nice to know you can help people like this. Just reach out like this and we can, I can be in my little house in New Zealand and do that. Paul, thanks a lot. Fab answer. Cheers, Paul. LB Productions, how do you play blues notes through chords? Blues notes through chords. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. This is where it'd be cool, like we can just call in, right? And you can show me something and I can be like, ah, oh, and know exactly what it is. Blues notes through, so if you're thinking of the blue note, like let's say there's a, there's a, through chords, you mean like a, I'm not sure if I know what you mean, whether you're meaning like playing riffs inside chords, so I'm playing like a, like a little a blue note inside the, inside the soloing and inside the riff, or you're talking about playing a blue note with a chord, so that you've actually got like a, which I'd say would probably be more something like a seventh chord, where you're doing that sort of a, seventh chord like that maybe i'm not sure if i so but please um let me know again though if you think uh, if, if i can help you with that hopefully i can help you by the end of this stream what else we got here today great questions i'm how can i play a song without knowing its chords i'm not going to try and pronounce your name again but you got a great profile pic um i'll call you for free <laughs> how can i play a song without knowing its chords. How can I play it? Oh, okay. So you mean like um, just hearing a song in your head and or, or you hear a song on the radio and you're like, oh, I don't know what the chords are and I haven't got tabs because it's brand new and no one on Ultimate Guitar has done anything. That might be what you mean. 
And if that's the case, that's a really intricate answer needed for that. But what I would do is I'd be listening. If, if the song is there and I've got the song and I can hear it, I would actually go through and find out. This is a very basic version, right? Is go out and work out where the main note of the bass note of the chord would be. Okay, so let's say it was a song like um, um, Imagine, right? Everyone knows the chords to Imagine generally, but Imagine there's no heaven, okay? That kind of thing. Um, or let's say it's something similar like Can You Feel the Love Tonight, right? I'm just taking some old school songs here that I've heard recently. So. Can you feel the love tonight? So I already know this chords, right? And you've got that little rundown. You go, I don't know where that is. So you'd be like, what I'd be doing is listening to the to the chord and trying to guess the bass note. So when I'd hear that first song and I'm like out, out of shot, I'm like, mm, mm, and the, the band's playing, mm, so where's that no? There it is. And I go, oh, it's a C. So I'd write down C. And then mm, mm, seems to drop down a bit. Can, can you feel? Doesn't do that in the melody, right? Though. Can you feel? That could be the bass note for the next one. There's a couple of options. It could be a B, so I write down a B, seventh fret. The love, mm, A, write down A tonight. Mm, G, and I write down a G. And then I go through and figure out if they're majors or minor. I go, can you feel? Oh, that's not going to be, that's going to be a weird one. That's not right. Minor, maybe not quite right. We'll get move on from that one. The love. That one's going to be a minor. Love, love. Cool. That's going to be better with a. Can you feel the love? And that second chord, I'll just make a. I'll just put my finger down. Do that weird chord. To an A minor. Love. That sounds good with a minor. So, so far, so good. Tonight. G, it's going to be major. G major works. And then I'd have the first part of that out. Now, once you've found the first four chords or so, you're probably going to find the rest of the song quite simply. That particular song's got a bunch of chords in it. It gets real sophisticated. And you might go, well, I've got every chord except for that weird one on the B, right? So maybe the B was not supposed to be a B minor or major. Maybe it's an on bass. And you go, oh, it's an on bass chord. So if you don't know what those are, don't worry. It's something we can figure out later on. But on bass chords are, or slash chords, they're called. Feels the crazy shape that one, eh? The love tonight. Oh, then we went not G, so we went to F at the last one. Just me not thinking right. And then you go, oh, there's different ways of playing that. Instead of doing that, I could go, can you feel the love tonight? Oh, cool. I've got the song. And you've figured out that first part. So that's one way of doing it. Another way is sometimes you listen for a chord when you're hearing a song you'll guess the D chord. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the neck of my guitar. Give you a test here, guys. This is testing everyone out there. Everyone up for a test right now? I'm going to play a chord and play two chords and see if you can guess what they are without seeing them because I've got them hidden away here, right? So I'm going to do the first chord. Here's the first one. A lot of people will recognize that straight away because it sounds really familiar on guitar. Here's another one. Now, in the comments... I want you to see if you can guess what those two chords are. Here's my first chord again. Here's my first chord, guys. What chord is it? Chuck it in the comments. Chuck what chord that is. Is it an A? Is it a D? Is it a G? Is it an E? Is it a minor or a major? Yes, some people have got that. Some people have got that. Here's my second chord. I think you, uh, if, I, if I'm not sure if I can scroll and actually see that. Yes, I can. Of course, the name I can't pronounce. Free, you just nailed it. Anyone else? Anyone else out there? Here's my first chord. Can't see it. Here's my next chord. It was an E and a D. E and a D. Look at that, the winner. That was actually pretty awesome. That's quite a fun little game. So I'll do this one more time. One more time. But it's you'll, no, you'll start noticing certain characteristics about chords especially this one for me that's the first chord i recognize like here if i play a famous song straight away you can guess what that is or even all those movements there it's based around a d chord and so you can kind of you kind of recognize that because you play it and you feel it 
So a lot of times you'll hear a chord and be like, oh, that feels like it's a C. It feels like a C chord. Just trust that. It's probably your subconscious going, I've played that chord a thousand times, bro. And then you go, oh, it is a C. Excuse me. Now, it might not give you all the chords, but if you get a few of them, it gives you a clue as to what the rest of the chords are trying to be because you'll be within a key, which usually the other chords that are attached to that chord are going to be the same. So if you're in the key of C, you're going to find there's six or seven other chords that you can possibly play with that C that are going to work. And it's always going to be like that every song you play in general, unless it's a real complex jazz song. Um, so yeah, that was quite fun, right? We'll do one more, one more chord. I'm going to give you one more chord, all right? Famous, uh, famous guitar chord, all right? Here we go. It's a bit quiet, isn't it? What is that chord? Now, how I, I would ask, what is, how does it make me feel? What does it take me to? For me, it takes me to a certain part of the world. It takes me to a certain place where I want to... takes me to that sort of place so what was that guys let me know in the comments who's going to get it who's going to get it i'm going to have to scroll up so i can actually see them wow you guys are smashing this one it was are you ready for this one more one more you can jump in it was yeah you guys have got it what is that a minor yeah spain Totally want to beat like. I just hear that chord and I always think of like. So for some reason, I'm in South America or somewhere with a. I just love that chord. It just takes you back to the. For me, I hear that. You know, rattlesnakes and stuff. Get that sort of groove going. But um, yeah, so you guys got it. So there's um, like. A, Amazing how many of you knew the A minor, isn't that, isn't that interesting? And I gave you two chords at the time before that, so it's even harder. But you get one chord, you narrow it down, and you can get that again. So kind of nice, right? Good way to do it. So uh, you guys have been awesome joining in there. Shall we do one more? Oh, look at that. Melden, is a thinner pick better for strumming or a thicker one? Okay, really good question. I like a thicker pick because I've developed my style so I can play very, very feathery with a thick pick. So the pick I've got is basically uh, just under a millimeter so it's like a 0 0.88 0 0.9 something so around that sort of area or i can play with a one mil as well pretty well um, i like it because i can dig in and it won't the pick won't bend too much but i've got a thin little pick here that i often use for recording now i've got a very flexible pick here this is a this is a nylon string pick see how flexible that is i can bend that it's it's Let's do that. It's very bendy, right? This other one, this this have a no bendy, not much bendy. There's a slight flex in it, but really not much at all. So nice and flexible, and I like these ones particularly because they. I don't know if you can see that, but there is. I'll try and get the angle. There's a little bit of grip on there. If I go right around. You'll see these little dots and stuff that are kind of perforated and sticking out. It's a really bad example. And so that's kind of nice to hold on to. And then it's nice and shiny at the bottom part. So nylon, this kind of nylon uh, has a different sound as well. So let's have a listen. It's probably not that noticeable to, to, uh, to you guys, but if I play a G chord and play with a light pick. No percussive stuff, I'll just keep it simple. Now a hard pick. Slightly harsher sound, right? A little bit more crisp sound with the lighter pick. Here's the lighter pick again. So what you might find is just purely for the song, right? So I use this, I'll use the lighter pick for um, strumming stuff by myself. Don't need much volume because you get more volume from a harder pick as well. It allows you to dig in. And sometimes you just want to play like a really comfortable, very light, feathery strum. And you just, or you want to be quite gentle like So this is so quiet that if you're in the room here, you, it's just more like it's, it's like the wind is just brushing through the strings and playing it, which is lovely if you're trying to get that kind of thing through. Now I can still do something similar with the harder pick. Here's the harder pick again. 
but it's not as secure because it doesn't take much for a bone like that to get a, a strong accent out, but I kind of like it like that. So yeah, it doesn't really answer your question that well, but just go for whatever feels good. And you can play, I mean, I've played with some amazing fast guitarists as well that are incredibly fast and they still play with quite, quite soft picks. I jump up and take over from them and they give me their little pick and I'm like, this is, I ain't gonna do the job. But um, for some reason, they just know how to use it. Danielle, beautiful lesson. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm glad. I've had a good time today, guys. It's good to see so many more people here on the stream. I think this time works, yeah? Let me know if this time works good for you guys or if you'd rather earlier or later. I can't really do that much earlier. I'd have to be up at four in the morning. But I'll do that for you guys because I love you that much. If it, I don't know if my wife's so happy about that. Paul, I will continue to watch your stuff. Really cool, man. Hey, that's great. Um, please also let us know where you are from, where you are um, commenting from. That'll be cool to know that. Um, see some really cool comments going in there, guys, and I'll have a look back through them after this stream. But I think we're about done. I hope you guys have had a good time. Does that sound good, Nikita? This is my lovely wife sitting upstairs. Yeah, look at that. Hey, you guys, been awesome. I can't wait to uh, do this again. We'll see you again next week. It's good to see everything's working again. Yeah, make sure you book a lesson. I've got plenty of time this week if we want to catch up one-on-one. -on -one. Don't be nervous. It's really fun. I'm hoping to do some stuff where I actually show you me teaching and how much it's actually just not a big deal at all. It's so cool to watch you play and figure out what you do really well. And then if there's some things I can help with, I'll now I'll narrow in on those things and you'll have a big change in your playing in a small period of time. Um, the coolest part is if we get to hang out and talk guitar and have a good time. Um, and yeah, you get better. You just get better. There's, it's a it's a guaranteed thing. You're going to get better or your money back. How's that? All right, guys. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, tell me where you're from. We've got Oregon. Bruce, you're from Oregon. Melbourne, India. Isn't that awesome how we got this met this like global guitar lesson going on? Time is perfect. Leon, thank you. All right, guys, we're going to take it easy. Make sure you uh, play lots of guitar this week, right? Take some of those tips on board. Just one thing this week. Just take on one new thing. We'll see you next week, same time, yeah? All right, catch you later.